Smack Zone now, West Indies produced a 37-run victory over the Aussies in their third and final T20 International in Perth to finish the series 2-1. Andre Russell led with a man of the match 71 before the bowlers produced their best performance of the series. Gerard Morris Seeley, Roston Chase's Barbadian countryman, has a recap. West Indies 2-0 down in the series but hoping to end on a high at the Perth Stadium. The Caribbean side changing tactics deciding to bat for the first time in the series. Yeah, but it didn't it. start well for Ruffman Powell's man, Johnson Charles. It works a bat like the short one, exactly as Adam Gilchrist described. Followed by Nicholas Puran to leave them two for seven. Kyle Mears came in for his first game of the series, but the opener's stay was short-lived, gone for 11. The West Indies, three for 17. Roston Chase smashed 37 from 20 deliveries, keeping the visitors above water before he was bowled by Adam Zampa. West Indies having batting death, and it showed again, as Andre Russell and Sherfrey Rutherford ignited the innings with a record 139 runs, six wickets stand. Rutherford was destructive, hitting 10 boundaries, five of each, Gets it to reaching the his first again. Rutherford international half century. Over. He's hung in there and now he's played a fine hand. 52 from 33, his first 50 in T20 international cricket. Congratulations to Sherfane Rutherford. Dre Russ initially wide. took a back seat in the partnership, but he too soon got to his milestone. His third T20 international 50. With his fifth six, he's 55 from 25. The man is an entertainer. The player of the match went on to top score with a 29 ball, 71, which included 39 of his last eight deliveries as the Wendy's closed on a six for 220. Over 200 runs were scored in every innings of the series and David Warner wanted to ensure the host maintained that record. He spearheaded the run chase with some explosive hitting. The lefty smashed the nine fours and three sixes in his 49 ball knock, reaching his half century in the first ball after the power play. However, West Indies had their best bowling performance with Romario Shepard and Roston Chase getting two wickets each as the Aussie innings halted after David Warner's dismissal for 81. Tim David fought at the end, contributing a blistering 19 ball 41 but the Wendy's bowlers were just too good on the day limiting the scoring and restricting the whole team to 5 for 183 to win by 37 runs and get a well-deserved win in the three-match series well done to Robert Powell and his team it's a very good feeling to come here and get a win you know it's always difficult to play in Australian conditions because the Australian team is such a strong one and they understand their conditions you know but credit have to be given to my boys tonight I think after being too loved down they really show some heart and show some courage well Robman did say pre-match that they didn't want the sweep and they avoided it cricket commentator and analyst Nikola Tamchandani joins us now to discuss what happened in this game. Uh, Nikhil, welcome to the Sports Match Zone. Great to have you on, as usual. Um, I'll leave you to discuss Roston Chase with Ricardo <laughs> when, when, when he begins his this discussion with you. But um, how satisfying would that victory have been for the West Indies last night? Yeah, massively satisfying, Lance. I think if we look past just the result and you analyze a few things that we've been talking about building up in the series, there were improvements on a lot of fronts. Uh, I'll start with the bowling. And I'll say that if the West Indies bowl like the way they bowled in this third T20 international at the T20 World Cup, they will be unbeatable. The execution was fantastic. Um, from Romario Shepard, especially, who continues to, to develop and continues to enhance his game as a death bowler. The Yorkers, it was, it was amazing to see. And then I must uh, talk about Roston Chase even before Ricardo comes in. Because to bowl four overs on the trot like that, and you saw the effect of spinning the ball away from the left-hander, uh, he got David Warner out, just saying. Anyways, but other than that, I'll say batting-wise, me and Ricardo spoke at length on the last segment about maximizing more deliveries. Just to give the viewers some context, in the last game, the West Indies faced 57 dots. Today, just 44. It was the first time in the series that they faced less than Australia, and I think it's no coincidence that they ended up on the winning side. So they've got the blueprint on how they can be sort of at their best ability and I think this is something for Darren Sammy to work with going into that tournament in June. Yeah, Nikhil, we know that Andre Russell on his best day is brutal. He's a ball beater. He can um, take any, way, any game away from, from any team. But I quite like Sherfin Rutherford's knock last night because 
his knock to me was a very skillful one. The, I saw him play a lot of shots where he deliberately, you know, played the ball over the infielders and so on. It looked very skillful for me. And because he hasn't been a, a long-standing player for the West Indies, I think coming into the T20 World Cup this year, Rutherford's inclusion now appears to me to be uh, a good one. Yeah, Lance, I, I think we deserve to give him a lot of credit because he was under pressure. Um, let's not forget that this guy has been in for Shimron Hetmeyer, who has a, a big reputation for the West Indies and T20 cricket as a whole. But also the fact that he really struggled in the first two T20 internationals, didn't get anything substantial, looked out of sorts. And even to start this innings, he was 20 from his first 20 deliveries. Nothing really flowing, but the fact that he had Russell at the other end, I think it allowed him to sort of play himself in. But the, as you mentioned, the stroke play, a couple of shots to point. Um, he's so strong against the short delivery. And then a few of those pulls and hooks, he was mesmerizing to watch. And I think the two of them worked really well. I, I don't think you'll find another team in the world that can be 79 for five and end up making 220. And that is the simple power that the West Indies possess. And as I said before, with that power and if they execute with the ball like that, they're unbeatable when the T20 World Cup comes around. Yeah, Nikhil. Well, let's get to the elephant in the room then, <laughs> shall we? And uh, it is, of course, as I learned um, last night, well, early this morning, Ross Ton. I hope I got the pronunciation correct. Apparently, we've been pronouncing it incorrectly all this time. But he was brilliant. There is no doubt about it. It's 37 from 20 got the West Indies going when they were in serious trouble at 3 for 17. And again, his 2 for 19 quite brilliant as well and bowling in difficult periods and he was part of that period of five overs between 12 and 16 when the West Indies only conceded 14 runs and took three wickets and he took two of those so from a bowling standpoint that is where the match really turned um, I would say dramatically in the West Indies favor because up to that point at 113 for one you thought the Aussies had a chance so a lot of credit must be given but I want you to talk about the, the assessment of the cricket um, and being able to make a lot of corrections on the part of the West Indies from deciding to bat this time around, not bowling um, Akil Hussain in the power play. He, he bowled the seventh over, I think it was, um, bowling the two spinners in, in tandem and keeping them together for a good period, which all worked. I just think you have to give the captain and generally the entire team a lot of credit um, for their problem-solving skills um, seen throughout the course of the, the, the series and certainly from the first two matches to this one. Yeah, Ricardo, I think uh, Robin Powell has shown, I mean, this is the first time he's lost a T20 International Series yeah. out of the four that he's captain. So let's not forget that. He's played some formidable opposition and he's showed that he's got, I think the main thing for me and also with head coach Darren Sammy, the ability to motivate a group. But his tactics on the field, I think, has really stood out in this series. I remember the first show we had, we spoke about them not bowling back-to-back -back overs in the power play. Since that discussion of that first game, he never did it. So... You look at those things, you look at the fact that he didn't bowl any spin in the power play, sort of taking from what Australia do, where you rarely see in their home conditions, they will both spin with that newer ball. And I think it worked out perfectly for him. He was brave today because I tell you, Roston Chase uh, bowling to a right-hander and bowling four overs on the trot, he bowled extremely well, but it's a massive risk in T20 cricket because guys size you up. But the fact that he had enough courage to back his guys um, and also back the way, the culture and the way that this team is playing their cricket from a batting perspective, they are not backing down at all. They will continue to be aggressive, whether it makes uh, 120 all out or today they get to 220. He has made it very abundantly clear that this is the way that they think they can win the World Cup and they back their depth. I also think Chase, his, his inclusion, it gives you a bit of batting depth, but also you saw that six bowling option today where you didn't have pressure to finish uh, four overs from each of the, the front line five. And I think it gives you a lot of options. I mean, everything. The way that they, they took down Adam Zampa today, when last has Adam Zampa conceded over 60 runs in a T20 game? Never. Hit 10 boundaries against him. Exactly. So I think it was great to see the approach. And it's clear that there's constant change, adjustment, but thinking going on in that dressing room, which is good signs. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic sign. Where do you stand on the player of the match debate? Because quite a discussion before the end of the game. Should it have been um, Andre Russell or should Rost and Chase um, have gotten the player of the match award? Your thoughts? 
I never thought I'd heard that question from. I would ever hear that question from you, Ricardo. But uh, it's great to hear. No, I personally, I think <laughs> if the man uh, performs, have, he performs. <laughs> just play with your man. I think I would have probably sided with Chase, um, just because of the overall impact. That thirty-seven from twenty. Don't forget the West Indies were seventeen for three in the power play and in real trouble. Um, Robin Powell hit a few boundaries, but he didn't really last too long. So I think his knock was the aggression, man. I couldn't believe Roston Chase, who is known as that all T20 anchor, was just able to come out there. He's very good against spin, very good with those paddles and reverse sweep sweeps. But the way he was able to just strike the ball from the onset was fantastic. And I think that is what allowed um, that partnership to just keep going, take on that, I don't like to use the word, but take the momentum throughout the innings. And then with the ball, fantastic. Because David Warner, the way he batted today, could have easily got 120 and they would have won the game. So that was a massive wicket and a good plan as well. He bowled nine deliveries to Warner and he only conceded 10 runs. So it was a clear plan, a matchup for Robin Powell, get the ball spinning away from the left-hander, Ricardo. <laughs> I'll tell you something, um, Nikhil. I just want to make it abundantly clear. I never ever said that Roston Chase is not a good cricketer. In fact, just, yeah, a, yeah, just yeah. a reminder of what I said is that I feel he is more suited for the longest format of the game, test format, and I am extremely disappointed that I, I use the word forced away from that format loosely um, because I think that's where he can be of greatest help. Of course, consistency is going to be an issue, but you cannot take away from him the performance that he laid down today. I have to say, though, I would still give Russell player of the match, so I agree with that decision because I think his knock was the one that changed the way that game was played. After Andre Russell scored 71 from 29 deliveries, including 39 from his last eight, it changed the way the rest of the game was played. And I do understand that Chase's impact was um, quite massive, um, but I think the way the game was played was already determined by Andre Russell, and that's why I agree with him being the player of the match. Rebuttal time. No, we agree to disagree because I think... When you look at the economy rates of all the other bowlers, and even Adam Zampa, and then you look at Chase's economy with the two wickets, he's my player of the match. Uh, but, you know, a big up to Jay Russ. I'm happy to have these discussions. It means the West Indies are playing well. Yeah, fantastic. It really does mean that the West Indies are playing well. And, and the squad depth, a quick word on Carl Mears, because he was brought into the team today, only got 11 and you have to feel, heading into the World Cup, that while he is likely to get into the squad, there is a possibility that, come that first game, he might find himself out of the eleven. Yeah, it is a possibility, and that's simply down to how well Johnson Charles has gone. I think, obviously, he got that 100 in South Africa, and then he sort of fell away um, in that India series, but returned at the back end of the England series, and now... The way he struck the ball, he played in the ILT20 a couple of weeks ago, and now in this series, he's right up there. And the only thing I think, um, well, what, so not the only thing, but one of the big things I think going for Mayer is that he's in sort of a rat. It's tough when you're not playing, um, you're going in and out of teams, in and out of different competitions. It's tough to get that rhythm and get runs so quickly. But the thing that he has going for him is the left-right combination. And Darren Sammy and Robin Powell have shown that they like to have that at the top of the order. It gives them flexibility when you've got uh, Mayors and King, and then you can choose between Hope and Puran to send in next. So I think it'll come down to matchups. Again, these are great problems for the West Indies to have. You could easily look at Roston Chase and Morty, uh, two spinners who do slightly different things, who could easily, you know, both play. So the fact that we've got these discussions, I think I would say 13 or 14 of that 15 man squad for the World Cup is locked. And I think it's really great to have that sort of solidity going into a big tournament like that. Yeah, very much the case. And uh, I mean, with the performance from Roston Chase, more for the West Indies selectors to think about heading into the World Cup, but maybe not as much as the Aussies will have to think about because they blooded a number of um, new players in this T20 setup and they still have their established stars to come back with the new players doing pretty well. And so it could end up being quite a selection nightmare for the Aussies. How do you see that side? of it yeah i think similar to what we saw with england at the last t20 world cup where sorry the last 50 over world cup yeah. where they changed it and chopped, chopped and changed their squad so much going into that tournament it sort of affected them yeah. i understand you want to give guys rest because they've been so busy pat cummins and um stark etc but i mean they've got their sport for choices i saw marsh open the batting 
You can go that way. This guy, Xavier Bartlett, has shown in the one international series. And even today, he can swing the ball at pace. And it was menacing. And it could be menacing in West Indian conditions as well. So, again, good problems to have. They made it abundantly clear that they want to experiment in this series. And, yeah, let's see ahead of the World Cup. Maybe they use some warm-up games to play the strongest 11. But they're a tournament team, man. They're a quality tournament team. I think they're right up there with a the favorite for that competition. Yeah, Lance, would love to hear you say that. And by the way, we're still working out the details of uh, getting you to Kingston to see how well you <laughs> do bowl. Um, so, of course, yeah, stand by for that because we'll be um, capturing that on video to show it to the people of the Caribbean and right across the world um, how good Nikhil Utam Chandani is when he has a ball in his hand. Nikhil, it's been a pleasure speaking with you throughout the course of this series and I'm sure that we'll have a lot to talk about. The women's um, Premier League coming up from India. There's the IPL later on this year and of course the World Cup. Lots of cricket to talk. We'll catch up soon. All right, brother. Long live Ross and Chase. Let's take a break <laughs> on the Sports Max Zone. We'll be back with more. That's a name that Nikolutam Chandani will be saying a lot this year, I think. <laughs>